वेलकम बैक वी आर लाइव फ्रॉम बायजू स्टूडियो एंड माई नेम इज सत्यजीत साहू एंड टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग एंड द नेम ऑफ टूडे लेक्चर इज न्यूमेरिकल्स ऑन कॉन्सोलिडेशन सेटलमेंट ओके सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व द न्यूमेरिकल्स विच आर आस्ट इन गेट फ्रॉम द टॉपिक वॉट कॉन्सोलिडेशन सेटलमेंट वी आर इन मिडल ऑफ अ लेक्चर सीरीज We have started a lecture series on YouTube. We started on seventh of June, where the first lecture was on primary consolidation. We have already completed that. Then on eighth of June, we completed consolidation settlement. Okay, the basic formulas and all. Okay, and today that is ninth of June. We are going to solve questions on numericals on consolidation settlement. Now, if you have missed the first two lectures, okay, you can always go to the official Byju's exam prep gate channel, and then you can watch those lectures, okay. Uh, but if you have not watched those lectures, still you can continue with the lecture. You will be able to understand how to use the formulas and find out the consolidation settlement, right? And after today also the lecture series continues, and it will end on Sunday. and by sunday you will have a very good hold on the topic of consolidation right now a brief introduction about myself my name is satyajit sahu i have done my btech from iit kharagpur in the branch of civil engineering obviously we are studying civil engineering so i will be obviously a civil engineer okay and then i have done my masters in structural engineering from same iit kharagpur so i am both mtech and btech from iit kharagpur okay after my masters i applied for gate and i was selected into many of the psus namely your dmrc iocl and hpcl and rights and all these psus i have cracked through gate only okay i chose dmrc and i served as the design manager of delhi metro rail corporation for a period of 2 years i have been in this field of gate industry from the last 10 years and i have taught all across the nation in almost all the states okay from north to south from east to west right and i teach all the civil engineering subjects now before starting the lecture yesterday we have given you an assignment right that you should summarize yesterday's lecture and then i will mention the best comment yes the best comment i have told that you need to summarize the lecture right and mention the summarization in the comment section so the best comment i will announce after some time but before that if you want to see my lectures on byju's exam prep app you can download this app okay you can download this app and then you can register through your mobile number and then you can select the examination word gate and esc civil you can select the category of your examination as gate and esc civil right and then you will get this page on the app here you can see that there are a lot of lectures okay i have taken lectures on design of concrete structures strength of material geotechnical engineering fluid mechanics okay and also i have taken the lecture of open channel flow okay you can see that other lectures are also there engineering mechanics hydrology building material structural analysis okay and engineering mathematics and general aptitude and all these lectures are taken by other esteemed faculties okay but i have taken the ticked ones okay and in short time you will be also getting the lectures of environmental engineering so all these are pre recorded high quality lectures where we have covered the whole syllabus of gate and you can go through the videos and you can see that it will be beneficial for you or not okay so this will come up is the upcoming lecture coming on this particular app okay now coming to the best comment of yesterday okay coming to the best comment of yesterday okay so here manandeep singh johar is writing big fan sir okay so uh, manandeep uh, is has been associated with our byjus from last 8 uh, to 9 months okay so he is our uh, uh, we can say colleague so you can welcome manandeep also to the class okay so now 
coming back to the best comment coming back to the best comment so i selected the best comment for the summarization and the best comment was from kartikeya the best comment was from kartikeya okay so kartikeya summarized yesterday's lecture you can read the comment i am not reading the comment full but i found it very effective the way he has explained the lecture that shows that he was very attentive in the class okay so we can you know uh, have a small clap obviously you can't clap okay you can clap at your home i will just have a small clap for kartikeya okay so some more comments were also there which i liked one comment was from vidyasri and one was from miss anu anu okay i don't know uh, the full name to so anu okay so so they have also written very good comments okay the comment by anu was very short so therefore i selected that okay but the best comment was from kartikeya okay but other comments were also good now one comment was a doubt that how to know when to use compression index and when to use recompression index so this doubt was asked by rajdeep das so it's a very beautiful doubt and be in this particular doubt i will clear in today's lecture okay that when to use cc and when to use cr okay this is what this is your compression index and this is what your recompression index okay this is what the recompression index now ladies and gentlemen this is a numerical session class so we'll be solving what we'll be solving numericals so you should sit with your copy pen and calculator don't just see the lecture as a movie or web series okay so it's a numerical session so i expect that you open your notebook pen and calculator okay be ready with that but before that let us revise the formulas for finding primary consolidation settlement this primary consolidation settlement sometimes they also tell it as what ultimate settlement sometimes in some books and you know some questions they mention the term ultimate settlement this is given by the term delta h okay the derivation of this all formulas we have seen in the previous lecture but if you have not seen that lecture you can see that lecture later on please continue with the current lecture so we have seen that what was the formula that delta h by h is equal to what cc okay okay cc no the first equation delta e by 1 plus e not right then from the definition of cc what was cc compression index was what the change in void ratio divided by what divided by log 10 sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash means what the effective stress is changing from what sigma 1 dash to sigma 2 dash how the sigma 2 dash was sigma 1 dash plus the additional stress plus the additional stress okay now from this i can put the value of delta e delta e will be what cc into this particular thing log 10 term so from here i can get delta h is equal to what cc h by 1 plus e not log 10 sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash so this is the first formula which we should know how to use right now coming to the second formula what was the second formula the second formula was in place of cc if i am using what mb what was mb it was ab by 1 plus e not ab by 1 plus e not and what is ab ab is your delta e by delta sigma then 1 plus e not right this was the term mb yes now you see from here this delta e by 1 plus e not is what mb into del sigma right yes so in place of this i can write down what mb into del sigma and i get my second equation that delta h is equal to what mb delta sigma dash into h so these two formulas form the basis of finding the ultimate settlement okay now now you see that we need to find out what many terms right if you want to find out settlement you need to know your cc you need to know your initial void ratio the layer thickness right 
then the initial stress, then the final stress, right? All those things you need to find out. So let us understand this by a simple example. Now you see what is happening in the process of consolidation. What is happening in the process of consolidation? And when I'm talking about primary consolidation, what is happening? The effective stress is changing due to additional stress. So when I'm adding this additional stress, what is happening? We are getting an increased stress or I can say that the stress is increasing from sigma 1 dash to sigma 2 dash. Right? Very good. Okay. Now, you need to find out this stresses or you know additional stress. This is what? The additional stress where again I will ask you the same question. All these stresses we are finding where? At what location? Okay. At what location we are finding this additional stress, this initial stress and final stress? Where we are finding, where we are finding all these stresses? Please mention in the comment section. Please mention in the comment section where I am finding initial stress, final stress, everything. Please mention comment section. Yes, very important fact that all these stresses are found where? At the mid depth of clay layer or I can say mid depth of consolidating clay layer. Mid depth of consolidating clay layer. Consolidating clay layer. So let us solve one question and understand this concept and how to use this formulas in numericals. Suppose we have a condition like this. Suppose this is your ground level. This is your ground level. GL will have a beautiful tree. This time I will draw up a better tree. Okay. One student told me that the tree was not that beautiful. So let me draw a beautiful tree. Okay. One student told that sir your tree was not looking like tree. So I told okay I will draw more beautiful tree. Okay. So we will have some apples also here. Or some for people who want to eat an apple. So suppose an apple tree. Okay. Okay, so just for, you know, joke. Okay, now, this is your ground water table. Okay, very good. And this is your clay layer. This is your clay layer. Okay, now, suppose, here, we have sand. Okay, above the clay layer, we have sand. And you can see that the soil above the Water table, this is the ground water table, that won't be saturated, right? Suppose I am giving gamma is equal to, suppose I am giving gamma is equal to 17 kilo Newton per meter cube, okay? And suppose the thickness of this thing, or I can say the depth of ground water table from the ground level is suppose 2 meter, okay? And suppose this depth of sand layer is 4 meter, depth of sand layer is 4 meter. And depth of clay layer is also 4 meter. Suppose this is also 4 meter. Now don't go by scale. You know, see this 4 meter, I can say that sir, the, both the 4 meter is not looking same. Don't go by scale. Okay, why we are finding at mid depth only? Why not top or bottom? To have an average value. Okay, to have an average value, we are taking at mid depth. Okay, now this 4 meter and 4 meter in the diagram, it is not looking same because it is not in the scale. Okay, but suppose it is same. Now, Tell me what will be this depth, this green one. What will be this green depth? Tell me. What will be this green depth? Tell me what will be this green depth? What will be this green depth? Please write. Very simple, right? This is 4 meter. This is 2 meter. Subtract it. How much? Please mention. 2 meter. Yes, it is 2 meter. Okay? Very nice. Now understand this diagram properly. Now understand this diagram properly. You see, from here to here, it is sand only. Right? But water table is here. So can I say this is your saturated sand, right? This is your saturated sand, right? 
so it will have different gamma right it will have different gamma and suppose the saturated unit weight of this particular sand is 18 suppose it is 18 kilo Newton per meter cube understood see this whole thing is sand okay but we have water table in between therefore below the water table it is saturated sand and above it it is it can be either dry or can be partially saturated okay now see in the clay layer suppose the gamma is this is also saturated but this is saturated unit weight of the clay and suppose this is 20.81 kilo newton per meter cube everybody understood the diagram yes everybody understood diagram now suppose everything was fine everything was fine so it won't consolidate always remember there will be consolidation there will be consolidation only when there is additional stress always remember this fact that there will be consolidation when there is additional stress now I have already told in the previous classes that the additional stresses can be due to many reasons right and suppose here the additional stress reason is a surcharge suppose a surcharge is placed at the ground level and suppose this surcharge value is 20 kilo Pascal what is Pascal Newton per meter square so this is the surcharge placed at the ground level placed at the ground level now before the surcharge we have to find out the effective stress the effective stress at the mid depth of clay layer now how to find out that very easy so if I want to find out the effective stress at the mid depth at the mid depth and this will be what now don't apply the surcharge surcharge will come later on surcharge will come later on because first you take the initial condition right then surcharge and then the final condition right so before the application of surcharge if I want to find out the effective stress sigma 1 dash that will be equal to how much that will be total stress minus your pore water pressure right we know that effective stress is equal to total stress minus pore water pressure right now how to find out the total stress that is very easy right total stress is nothing but the summation of gamma into z total stress remember those who have not understood the concept of effective stress I will just tell you in a short uh, duration that the total stress will be what summation of the gamma z gamma z means what the unit weight into the depth of the layer so can I say there are three layers here this is two meter this is two meter and this will be how much this will be two meter because we are finding at the mid depth right since you are finding at the mid depth this will be also two meter now this is the gamma this is the thickness yes yes this is the gamma this is the thickness this is the gamma this is the thickness now I can easily find out total stress right so can I say total stress which will be summation of gamma z will be how much it will be 17 into 2 right plus 18 into 2 plus 20.81 into 2 how much you're getting please tell me how much you're getting what is the total stress please tell me what is the total stress what is the total stress value please calculate and tell me I will also use the calculator and do with you okay so please calculate and tell me that what is the total stress at the mid depth of this clay layer let us find out okay so I have found out the value now waiting for you please tell me what is the total stress I'll just cross check I have already found out please tell you have to tell total stress don't tell me other stresses tell me total stress yes the total stress is 111.62 so I'll erase these things and total stress I am getting 111.62 
6 to remember this is the way we find out total stress just take the gamma and thickness okay now what will be the pore water pressure the pore water pressure is gamma w into z and what is this z this z should be the depth of that particular point from the ground water table we are finding stress here right we are finding stress here right so depth of this point from ground water table this is how much this is 4 meter right this is 4 meter right this is 4 meter right now what will be the pore water pressure then gamma w you will take how much 9.81 and the depth of that particular point from the ground water table is 4 so how much you are getting tell me the pore water pressure please tell me what how much you are getting the pore water pressure please tell me the pore water pressure i am waiting for your answer so it's a very simple thing but you should know See, I can also calculate and write down, but I am waiting for your answers. 39.24. Very good. 39.24. Now, I can easily calculate the effective stress, initial effective stress. See, initial effective stress, you will find without the loads and all. Okay. So, this will be 111.62 minus 39.24. So, what is the initial effective stress? what is the initial effective stress please tell me what is the initial effective stress calculate and tell me see it's a numerical session so you have to get involved in this okay you have to be involved in this don't just sit okay sit with your calculator your notebook or pen and paper whatever you want yeah Lokesh Mina is writing 72.38 Yogesh is writing 72.38. Yeah, it is 72.38 kilo Pascal, kilo Pascal or kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. So whenever they give you a question of consolidation settlement, your first step should be what? Your first step should be what? Your first step should be to find out the initial effective stress, right? And where? at mid depth of clay layer this should be your first step at mid depth of clay layer okay this should be your first step and we understood how we are going to find it we understood how we are going to find it and we found out at the mid depth of this particular clay layer right the initial effective stress was 72.38 kilopascal so first step everyone understood the first step is this how to find out i explained to you now the additional stress the additional stress can be due to various reasons like surcharge a footing right or lowering a water table but suppose there is a surcharge like this there is a surcharge like this and suppose i told you what was the value of the surcharge the value of surcharge is equal to 20 kilo pascal suppose this is your surcharge this is your surcharge okay now we know that whenever there is a surcharge the increase in effective stress at any depth let that this depth this depth this depth or even at the mid depth of the clay layer will be what the increase in effective stress will be equal to the surcharge remember this fact Remember this fact that the increase in effective stress will be equal to the surcharge. And that's what is the second step. Always find what? First step is to find out the sigma 1 dash. Second step is to find out the increase in effective stress. And in this case, it was quite easy because the surcharge that is equal to 20 kilo Pascal. Right? 20 kilo Pascal. Now, after you have found these two things, then you will go for the equation. Then if I want to find out the settlement, the settlement, okay, after you find out these two things, understood, 
always understand that the first two steps would be this one. First one is find out the initial effective stress at the mid depth of clay layer. Second is to find out what? The increase in stress, right? Now once you get that, once you get that, the next step is what? The next step is to see what data is given. Because H per that data only, you are going to use the equation, right? Right? Suppose data is given is CC. Suppose CC I am giving you as 0.3. CC is was compression index. If CC is given, then I will use which formula? I am going to use this formula, right? Delta H is equal to CC H by 1 plus E naught log 10, right? Sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash. So now I can easily use the formula, right? CC is given how much? It is given 0.3. See, if I'm interested in finding the settlement in mm, then I will use H also in mm, right? Now what is H tell me here? What is H? Please, you might have drawn the... Yes, Yogesh is writing doubt, sir. Surcharge to total stress may consider hoga. Yes, if surcharge is increasing the total stress, it will increase the effective stress also, right? Because what is effective stress? That is equal to total stress minus pore water pressure. If it, this is increasing, this is also increased by same amount, right? Yes. So please tell me, what is the H in mm? What is H in mm? What is H here? For that, we can see the diagram also. Huh, what is the value? Okay, you're not telling the value. Okay, let me tell you the value. The value is 4 meter. Always remember, H is the thickness of the clay layer or the consolidating layer. Okay, so here H is 4 meter. In mm, it will be how much? 4,000. So 4,000 divided by 1 plus E naught. Suppose the E naught is also given to you. Don't worry, all this data will be given to you. Okay, the required data will be given to you. Suppose I am writing that these two datas are given to you in the question. Don't worry, sir, they will give or not. They will give you your data. Don't worry. Suppose this is given to you. Now tell me E will be 0.52 log 10. What will be sigma 2 dash tell me? What will be sigma 2 dash? Sigma 2 dash will be, you see from here, sigma 2 dash, the final stress will be what? The initial stress plus the increment, making it how much? 92.38 kilopascal, right? Yes. So now I can write down here 92.38 divided by what? Initial stress is 72.38. Very straightforward question. Please give me the value of the ultimate settlement or the settlement due to primary consolidation. Please give me the value. Calculate yourself and please give me the value. I'll also do the calculation so that you don't cheat me. <laughs> and it is log 10. Don't take ln, okay? Don't take log uh, base E. Take log 10. Yes, 83.65. I also got 83.65. So it is 83.65 mm. 83.65 mm. I'll just cross check the coast data. Might have committed some mistake. Let me just cross check it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's correct. Understood? Very simple method. Okay. Very simple method. Now, now this data is given. Why we use this formula? Because CC and E0 were given. Okay. Suppose I am telling that this is the given data. Suppose in place of CC and E0, they are giving you MB. And suppose MB is 10.46. 
MB is, I write down little below, MB is 10.46 into 10 to the power minus 4 meter square per kilo Newton. Right? They might give you the MB also, right? If they give you MB, which formula you'll use? You'll use the formula delta H is equal to what? MB, right? Then delta sigma dash into H. Now, again, if you want to find out this in MM, you will use what? This H also in MM. The formula is straightforward. So 10.46 into 10 to the power minus 4 into delta sigma is how much? You have got 20. Yes, that is the increment the surcharge. And your H is how much? 4000. So how much are getting this delta H? Tell me. How much are getting this delta H? Please tell me. Please calculate and tell me. Now almost are getting the same answer that is 83.68. Almost I can say 83.68. Seven. Understood? So these are the two methods to find out what? This I can say is the first method, right? And this I can say is the second method to find out what? The ultimate settlement. Now which method to use? That depends on what is given to in the question, right? If this is given, MB is given, then you have to use this equation, right? If your E0 and CC is given, then you have to use this equation. But you have to find out what? If see, MB is given, then only delta sigma dash can do, right? Yes, if MB is given, only delta sigma can do. But if CC is given, then you have to find out what? This initial effective stress. Hope you have enjoyed this particular question where I have explained you how to use both the formulas. Okay? So you can comment in the comment section that is the thing clear or not? Have you understood these two equations nicely or not? Then we'll proceed uh, further ahead. Okay? Please write in the comment section that you have understood this particular thing or not. If you have understood, then we will proceed ahead. Please comment. After this, we will be discussing when to use CC and when to use CR. Okay, it's a very important doubt of many students. So when to use CC and when to use CR, that we'll see. Okay. Clear. Very good. Very good. So let us proceed. Let us proceed. Before that, I will have some water. You can also have some water so that you will feel a little rejuvenated. Okay. Right. So now, we'll proceed. Now we saw this equation, right? We saw this equation. Which equation? That delta H is equal to CC H 1 plus E naught log 10 what? Sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash. Now this we will use when? When the soil is NC clay. When the soil is NC clay, we'll use this. Now, what does this mean, NC clay? That means the present stress is more than the pre-consolidation stress. So, suppose the pre-consolidation stress is sigma naught dash. This is what? I can say pre-consolidation stress. I can say this as what? Pre-consolidation stress. Or I can say this as what? maximum past stress or I can say this as what maximum past stress now you see carefully now you see carefully the stress increased from where to where it increased from sigma 1 dash to sigma 2 dash okay it increased from this to this but suppose after increasing or before increasing still it is more than this value means what I can say sigma 2 dash will obviously greater than sigma 1 dash, right? Because we have got sigma 2 dash by increase, okay? Now, if this both are greater than the pre-consolidation stress, 
right? If both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are greater than the pre-constitution stress, then I can say that the soil is experiencing this stress for the first time, right? That means what? NC clay. NC clay. But to check this, to check this, you need to have the value of this, right? This sigma naught dash, the pre-constitution stress, right? You need to have the value of this. One doubt is there, sir, pore water pressure may saturated soil mass ka unit weight be considered hoga kya? See, this is a doubt of effective stress. I will take some separate lessons on effective stress. That time we'll discuss this, okay? So let us come back to here. Now you see, this is what, or you can, um, your guest is asking me the doubt. You can, uh, you can message me on my number. I will clear you, okay? You can personally ask the doubt because it will waste the time. If we discuss now, it will waste the time of this particular lecture, okay? So we'll, I will clear this doubt personally. Now you see, Sigma not dash. This is the pre constitution stress. If it is given, then only I can compare, right? Yes. If this is given, this value is given, then only I can compare. You see, this value, this value, I am calculating. But if this value is not given, how I'll compare? So if this value is not given, you can assume NC clay. Okay? You can assume NC clay if the value is not given. Or if it is written NC clay, you can directly take it as NC clay. But suppose I have a condition, suppose I have a condition that your sigma 2 is greater than sigma 1 dash, but both are less than the pre-consolidation stress. Yes, this condition is possible. If this condition happens, then what I can say? I can say that your soil is OC clay because the past stress is more than the present stress. This point everybody understood or not. This point everybody understood or not. Anil is asking what are the causes of settlement? The causes of settlement I have explained in the first lecture. You can see in the uh, Baiju's exam prep channel. I have explained that particular lecture. You can see that lecture. Okay. Now please everybody write have you understood this point or not that when we will take it as NC clay and when we will take it as OC clay. If you have understood, you can write, I am just proceeding. Okay. So if this is a OC clay, the formula changes to what? Delta H is equal to what? In place of CC, I will use what? CR, the recompression index. Okay. That is the fact. Okay. That thing was asked by one student, which I explained now that when it is a OC clay, this condition prevails. I will use this equation. If sigma 2 dash is greater than sigma 1 dash and both are greater than sigma naught then this is what I can say this is your NC clay and I will take what delta H is equal to CR no CC this is the difference this is ladies and gentlemen the difference log 10 sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash right so you see the both condition is a very important equation, very important thing. This is your CR in OC clay, CC in NC clay. Now we'll solve a question to understand this better. Okay, we'll solve the question to understand this better and that will be the end of this particular lecture. Okay, so a beautiful question is there. Okay, we have a footing load. We have a footing load. Okay, we have a footing load. And then both CC is given and CR is given and it is asked to find out the consolidation settlement and it is asked to find out the consolidation settlement. For this first step is what? You have to find out what? Your sigma 1 dash. This sigma 1 dash is what? It is the initial effective stress. Means what? Before the footing is placed, right? I can say sigma 1 dash is what? Sigma 1 dash is initial effective stress. So can you find out the initial effective stress at the mid depth? I have already explained to you before some time. So can you find out? Can you find out this value? I am directly mentioning the value. Your homework is you should find out this value because this particular thing I just explained you some time before. Okay. So I'm directly giving you the value at the mid depth. This is before the footing is placed at the mid depth. Okay, you see, this total is 2 meter. You see, this total is 2 meter. 
okay this is also 2 meter why you see this is 0 meter this is 2 meter depth this is 4 meter depth so this will be how much 2 meter and you can see that the clay layer is how much the clay layer is 3 meter right why because you see this is 4 meter this is 7 meter so the clay layer depth is 3 meter so this becomes what the edge but you have to find out the effective stress where you have to get the effective stress at the mid depth of clay layer so this will be how much this will be 1.5 meter you see gamma z gamma z gamma z right so from there you can find out total stress i have also already explained to you okay and then you can find out pore water pressure also the same way which i explained to you before and the initial effective stress i am directly mentioning for you it is around 63.7 kilo newton per meter square can you find out this initial effective stress yourself later on i am just giving you as homework okay i am giving it as homework can you find out it yourself can you find out yourself please mention in the comment section because i have already explained to you how to find out Some student has found out wrong value also. <laughs> Some student have found out wrong value also. So let me do it for you. <laughs> let me do it for you. <laughs> let me do it for you. You see, total stress will be 16 into 2, okay, plus 18 into 2, plus how much you will take? This is gamma saturated. So 20 into 1.5. So total stress, how much you are getting? 32 plus 36 okay plus I can say 30 I am getting 98 98 kilopascal right and what will be the pore water pressure the pore water pressure will be gamma w into z and z you will take from where you will take z from the ground water table to this mid depth this is how much tell me this z is how much you see this is 2 meter this is 2 meter, this is 1.5 meter, that makes how much? 3.5 meter. So gamma W is 9.81 into 3.5, giving me how much? 9.81 into 3.5, okay, that gives me 34.34. 34.34. If you subtract now, you'll get the effective stress. The initial effective stress is how much? I can take 98 minus 34.3 almost I can take. That is 98 minus 34.3. I'm getting how much? 63.7. So some students have done correctly also. 665, I can take round up 63.7. Initial effective stress, right? This is the initial effective stress. Now, coming to what? Coming to the stress increment. Coming to what? The stress increment. How to find out the stress increment? Okay. For that, we have to see the dispersion of load. For that, we have need to find out what the dispersion of load. Now, you see what is given in the question. It is given, it is a square footing of 3 meter size. It is a square footing of, sir, so got it. Okay, very good. So, square meter of 3 meter size. So square footing means what? This will be 3 meter. This will be what? This will be your 3 meter. Now there will be dispersion of load and we have to find out the additional stress where at the mid depth of clay layer okay at the mid depth of clay layer so dispersion will be something like this the load will get dispersed like this this 800 kN will get, act on a wider area and how to get that area very easy by simple geometry by simple geometry we can get this area how to get this area you see it's a square footing of, a, of side how much? 3 meter. So this is 3 meter. Yes, this is 3 meter. So if this is 3 meter, I can say this one also will be 3 meter. Right? This one also will be 3 meter. Now, what will be this depth? Can you find out this depth? Yes, we can easily find out this depth. How? You see, what will be this depth? Tell me. 
this total depth will be equal to 2 okay we can say 2 this is 2 meter okay then again 2 meter and this is how much this is 1.5 right so I can say this is equal to 5.5 meter this is what 5.5 meter right so this I can say is what the depth of this particular mid depth of clay layer from the top but I have the geometry I have to take this one right I would take this one this one will be how much 5.5 minus you have to subtract this 1.2 so when you subtract this 1.2 you will get how much you will get 4.3 meter right you will get 4.3 meter so this is what from geometry is very simple thing you see from the geometry only you can find out this is what this is your 4.3 meter this is your 4.3 meter now if I, I can find out this value and I can find out this value if I can find these two values then I can get this particular length right I'll get this particular length now how to find out this value very easy that will get from this dispersion slope always remember the dispersion slope will take as what two vertical is to one horizontal or I can say one vertical is to half horizontal if I say two vertical is to one vertical is to half horizontal means what if in vertical it is one in horizontal it will be half now in vertical this is 4.3 so what will be this half of that right 4.3 divided by 2 right and this also will be how much this also will be 4.3 divided by 2 okay so now can you give me this total value yes this will be 3 plus 4.3 divided by 2 into 2 making it how much 7.3 meter 7.3 meter understood so it's very important that in case of footing you are able to find out this length then only you will get the new area right then only you will get the new area so I can say that at this level I can say at this level the footing looks like this right the area on which at this level at the base of the footing this load is acting on a square area of 3 meter into 3 meter but when the loads get dispersed when the load gets dispersed now it is acting on a wider area and this is also a square but the size of the square will be how much the size of the square will be 7.3 meter so the same load will act on a wider area somebody has found the answer also right the same load will act on a wider area and this is what the additional stress due to this footing load understood how we are finding this additional stress due to this footing load very easy so this will be equal to the load 800 kilo Newton which is acting on this area that is what 7.3 square why 7.3 square because a square area so this will be equal to if you calculate you will get around as Arsenal has found out it is 15 kilo newton per meter square now this calculation is very important i can write down what very important for your gate examination because in your gate examination they ask you many questions on footing load and consolidation of a clay layer so always remember whenever this is given you take the footing load and then found out the new area how to find out the new area i just explained to you by this dispersion by this dispersion how to find out I just told you the method so our two steps is done first step is what you have found out the initial effective stress and then you have found out the stress increment so I can say that your initial effective stress is equal to 63.7 kilo Newton per meter square and your stress increment is 15 kilo Newton per meter square very good now now what will be the final stress it will be the initial stress plus the increase in the effective stress that will be equal to 63.7 plus 15 making it how much 78.7 kilo Newton per 
meter square understood very good so this is what sigma 2 dash right now hmm how to solve the question for that i will give you two cases suppose the first case is that pre consolidation stress is equal to 50 kilo pascal this data is suppose given to you now tell me what about circular other kind of structures for that also you need to find out the increment in vertical stress and that is a separate chapter and that chapter i have taught where you want to see that chapter in that calculation you please go to i have explained that in the byju's exam prep app i have taught all those lectures so you can go to vertical stress increment and how to find out this i have already explained there because in one hour i can't explain everything right yes so this is your pre consolidation stress now tell me this is which kind of soil please tell me this is which kind of soil this is which kind of soil please tell me this is which kind of soil and which parameter you will use for your consolidation settlement you will use cc or cr please mention this is which kind of soil now if your pre consolidation stress is given this one and please mention that which parameter you will use please tell me in the comment section yes 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 nc clay and which parameter we will use which parameter we will use cc very good you see sigma 2 which is 78.7 sigma 2 which is 78.7 is greater than what sigma 1 which is how much which is your 63.7 and that is greater than what your pre consolidation stress which is 50 so this is what nc clay nc clay means i will use what your cc so i can tell that delta h is equal to cc h by 1 plus e naught log 10 sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash you see so straightforward question right so straightforward question please use this data i have already given data yes you see this is the e naught given right is the e naught given yes e naught is given to you and cc is given to you so please find out the settlement use the formula and please find out settlement and h is how much h is 3 meter so i can say 3 meter i can say 3000 meter so please use this data and find out please use this data and find out cc is given 0.27 okay so it's 0.27 h is 3000 right 1 point i think 634 why 1 plus e naught e naught is 0.634 log 10 sigma 2 dash is 78.7 sigma 1 dash is 63.7 let us see what is the answer you are getting delta h in this case please mention 45.5 45.5 mm very straightforward question so you can see that we first found out what sigma 1 dash then the increment sigma 2 dash we checked it is a nc clay or not it was nc clay so we use cc and we found out for this nc clay the ultimate settlement right and this was our first case suppose this case was given suppose this pre consolidation stress was something else suppose i am telling that this pre consolidation stress is 100 kilo pascal then what happens if this happens you see sigma 2 which is 78.7 
and sigma 1 which is 63.7 both became less than the pre-consolidation stress that means what it is OC clay now that means it is NC or OC see it is NC or OC it depends on what it depends on the relative values of sigma naught pre-consolidation stress okay the final effective stress and the initial effective stress so from the data you can check now if this is the case I will use what delta H is equal to CR CR H by 1 plus E naught log 10 sigma 2 dash by sigma 1 dash now see everything remains same only in place of CC I am using CR and CR is given suppose in the question is given 0 0.09 so in place of 0.27, you will just use what? 0 0.09. So it will be 0 0.09. 0 0.09, H is how much? H is 3000 divided by 1 plus E0. E0 is given 0 0.634 and then log 10, what? 78.7 sigma 2 dash and this is 63.7. So how much are getting this delta H? Tell me. This delta H, how much are getting? Please mention. Today I had a well numerical session. So those who are attending the lecture and those who are seeing the recorded lecture, you would have got very good understanding of when to use OC clay, when to use NC clay, all those things are clear. It will be just one third, na? You see, CC was 0.27, you are getting 45. CR is 0 0.09, you will get how much? Tell me. How much are you getting? Tell me. 15.17. Now see so beautiful question. You see so beautiful question. The same clay. You see same clay layer. Everything is same, right? Everything is same. Okay. Everything is same. Just there it was. NC clay. The settlement was 45.5. And here it is OC clay, it is 15.17. Tell me which one is more compressible? NC clay is more compressible. And that's what we have studied before also in our first lecture. Right? In our first lecture in this primary consolidation, we have already explained to you that NC clay, okay, will be more compressible. You can see it is more compressible. Okay? So, you will check that it is NC clay or OC clay depend, depending upon the relative values of sigma naught dash, sigma 2 dash and sigma 1. And then you can use the equations. Now, very tricky thing. A very tricky thing. Those who are watching this lecture, please see this point. And this is asked in the examination and many students are confused in this. Suppose the case C is the pre-consolidation stress is 70 kilo pascal now what happens what happens you see sigma 2 is how much 78.7 sigma 1 is how much it is 63.7 now what happened to sigma not this it came in between right okay in between yes it came in between now how is the soil is it NC or OC that is both here the soil behaves as both you see when Sigma 1 is you see in this range you see in this range from 63.7 to 70 what is happening the pre-consolidation stress is more than present stress right so in this range the soil behaves as OC clay right and in this range, the soil behaves as NC clay. Is everybody clear about this particular concept or not? Is everybody clear about this particular concept or not? Please tell. Please tell everybody is clear with this particular concept or not. Because you see in this range, in this range, the pre-consolidation stress is more, past stress is more. Past stress is more means OC clay. And in this range, 
the past trace is less means what nc claim yes so now i will use both the equations yes so the final settlement will be okay the final settlement will be first for the oc part for the oc part it will be how much delta h will be equal to i can say it will be c r c r h right 1 plus e naught log 10 the stress is changing from where to where from this to this right so i can say from 63.7 to 70 right and for nc clay i'll use cc h 1 plus e naught log 10 the stress is changing from where to where from 70 to 78.7 so it will be 70 to 78.7 understood everybody or not understood everybody or not this point everybody is absolutely clear no not and those who are watching is decoded this is a very beautiful point which can be asked in the examination already asked okay so now just put the values h is 3000 put the values and give me h is 3000 mm okay e naught is 0.642 or 634 sorry 634 everything else is same cc is how much cc is given point 27 sorry and cr is given point 09 please calculate and tell me for the oc part how much settlement you are getting for the nc part how much settlement you are getting please tell me I'll again explain this point after calculation. I'll again explain the point. First, tell me you can mention for OC this much, NC this much. I'll again explain this point at the end of the lecture, but before that, please mention the values. Come on, you should do it fast. Eh, very good. For NC, I am getting 25.13, correct? Almost 25.2 I can take, I can say round figure I can take this and this I am getting, sorry, for the NC part I am getting 25.2 and for OC part I will get almost 6.8, okay. These are the values you can cross check yourself, huh? if you have done something wrong that's a different thing, okay. You can cross check yourself. So what will be total settlement, the total settlement will be how much, 25.2, okay plus 6.8 giving me how much 32 mm yes yes okay understood so now we can say that for the nc clay how much i got 45.5 for oc clay how much i got 15.17 but when the soil was acting both, yes, when the soil was acting both, then it is in between them, right? Everybody understood? So I'll just revise this. I'll just revise this. That when your sigma naught is greater than both, when sigma naught is greater than both, this is what? OC clay, right? And you will use what? You'll use CR. And when, sorry, this is sigma 2 and sigma 1. And when sigma 2 dash is greater than sigma 1 dash is greater than sigma naught, this is what? This is your NC clay and I'll use what? CC. But if there is a condition that your sigma naught falls in between, it falls in between, that means what? 
I can say from here to here it is behaving like OC. From here to here it is behaving like NC. In the examination, the recent gate examination, they just ask the expression. Can I say the expression is this? The expression is CR H by 1 plus E naught log 10. In the OC part, it is increasing from what? Sigma what to sigma 1 dash to sigma naught dash plus the NC part CC H 1 plus E naught log 10. The stress is increasing from sigma naught dash to sigma 2 dash. In the recent gate examination, they have just asked this expression. And you see, you can easily write down this expression if you have understood the concept. So this, ladies and gentlemen, I can say the summarization of what? Your how to find out the consonant settlement with solved numericals. So again, I will summarize. First point is what? First step is what? You find out sigma 1 dash at mid depth. At mid depth. Right? Of clay layer. Then you find out what? The increase in stress. That can be due to surcharge. So in that case, it will be directly equal to the surcharge. Or if it is a footing, then obviously I explained you how to find out the stress increment okay, due to the dispersion. And once you find out you can use equations. I can say use relevant equations, right? Use what? Relevant equations of delta H. Use rela relevant equations of delta H. Okay? So, thank you very much. This was all. Okay? So, this is my contact number. So, if somebody still want to have some doubt, they can ask me on this number. Okay? And again, if you want to access high quality videos, all of them are present where? In Baiju's exam prep app. So download the app and you can see many of my such lectures. And you can also watch lectures of mine and other esteemed faculties, okay, on our channel and also on the app. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Same time at 6 p.m. Bye.